If everything had gone exactly to plan, Tesla would already be producing 4680 batteries at a run rate greater than 100 gigawatt hours per year, but obviously that's not the case. When it comes to the latest updates, in Tesla's Q1 2023 investor conference call, Drew Baglino did have quite a bit to say about Tesla's 4680 manufacturing progress. So stick around because in this video, I'm not only going to highlight some of the important details that Drew Baglino revealed, but I'm also going to provide added context to these details. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. At the end of 2022, Tesla revealed on Twitter that they were able to build 868,000 battery cells in a single week, which equated to a run rate of just under 4 gigawatt hours of cell production per year, a far cry from the 100 gigawatt hour goal that Tesla had previously discussed. However, despite being behind their original plans, Tesla does appear to be making steady progress with their 4680 manufacturing, and they recently hired a new director of dry electro development to solve various engineering issues in that dry manufacturing process. Additionally, Tesla also recently added the 4680 equipped standard range all-wheel drive Model Y to the US design studio, which is also an extremely positive sign when it comes to 4680 manufacturing. More recently in Tesla's Q1 2023 conference call once again, Drew Baglino shared more positive details about Tesla's 4680 manufacturing progress, and now let's discuss those details. Drew started out his 4680 battery comments by giving a brief update on the cell production lines at Gigafactory Texas. Drew said, For the Texas 4680 factory, we are partway through building and commissioning and installing. Unfortunately, this is not a very specific update. I wish Drew would have given a bit more details. However, if we go to the last conference call, the Q4 2022 Tesla investor conference call, we got more specific updates that provide context to these comments. In that previous call, Drew Baglino said, quote, as far as where we stand in Texas, one of four lines are in production with the remaining three in stages of commissioning and install. With this added context, it appears like three of the four initial Gigafactory 4680 battery lines are not yet operating operational. But hopefully in the next quarterly update, we'll get an update that these three battery production lines are in operation. And as a reminder, based on what I was told in the past, each of the initial four battery production lines at Gigafactory Texas are supposed to have a planned output of 25 gigawatt hours each when fully ramped up, which of course would add up to 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 battery production from this factory per year. Now, something interesting that I've been noticing is that it appears like Tesla is using their Gigafactory in Texas to really be the proving grounds for their second generation of 4680 battery cells before they expand and add a bunch of 4680 production equipment at their other factories. On that note, in Tesla's Q1 2023 conference call, Drew Baglino did officially confirm that Tesla is indeed manufacturing a second generation of 4680 battery cells at Gigafactory Texas, which he described as, quote, a second more manufacturable version. Now, this is a topic that I've talked about quite a bit at length in past videos. But as a reminder, when it comes to manufacturing simplicity, as Tesla revealed at their 2023 Investor Day event, these second generation of 4680 battery cells only require 21 production processes versus the 23 processes that are required for generation one 4680 battery cells. In addition, these new second generation 4680 battery cells should be more energy dense due to design changes that at the very least includes a much more compact battery cap, which allows for larger electrodes and results in these battery cells being made up of 15 parts instead of 16 parts for the generation one battery cells. It of course makes a lot of sense to make Gigafactory Texas the proving grounds for their second generation of 4680 battery cells because Tesla is still perfecting their manufacturing processes and it doesn't make sense to build out more battery production lines and install a bunch more equipment until they have all the processes running smoothly and efficiently. For example, Tesla is still optimizing the dry anode manufacturing and this is something that Drew Baglino discussed 
at their recent Investor Day event on March 1st of this year. And he discussed the fact that they are currently running two anode production lines at Giga Texas with two different iterations of how the anode powder enters into the tool to be laminated onto the electrode film in order to determine which iteration has the highest yield. The next updates that Drew Baglino recently shared had to do with their cathode processing facility that they're building at Gigafactory Texas, and also the lithium refinery they're building in Corpus Christi. Specifically, Drew said, for lithium, our Corpus Christi lithium refinery breaks ground this May. Our goal is to start commissioning portions of the facility before the end of the year. It's of course really good news that Tesla appears to still be on track for uh, starting commissioning of this factory by the end of the year. And for added context, based on what we learned at Tesla's Investor Day on March 1st once again, eventually this facility should be able to refine enough lithium to build 50 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, which would be somewhere around half of the 100 gigawatt hour uh, plan for Gigafactory Texas battery production from those first four production lines. Now, why would Tesla bother with building their own lithium refinery and refining their own lithium when they could just buy that from other companies? I believe there are several key reasons that first of all involve cost and supply because the cost of refined lithium can be extremely expensive. And in addition, there's a lot of demand for this lithium because there's a lot more demand for lithium ion batteries right now. And I believe demand is just going to increase exponentially in the future. So Tesla is able to control more of that by doing that themselves. But really, I believe the key reason comes down to the fact that Tesla is pioneering a new and improved spodumene refining process that appears to be much more environmentally friendly and I imagine less expensive as well. Here's how Drew Baglino described this process in Tesla's Q1 2023 investor conference call. The refinery uses a sulfate-free spodumene refining process with reduced process costs, no acid or caustic reagents, lower embodied energy. It actually produces a beneficial byproduct that can be repurposed in construction materials. We discussed all of these concepts on Battery Day. When it comes to what Drew is referring to and the specific comments that were made at Battery Day, here's a clip of Drew Baglino discussing this at Battery Day back in September of 2020. The way the lithium ends up in the cell is through the cathode, so then we should obviously on-site lithium conversion as well, which is what we will do using a new process that we're going to pioneer. That's a sulfate-free process again, skip the intermediate. 33% um, reduction in lithium cost, 100% electric facility co-located with the cathode plant. Beyond the lithium refinery, Tesla, of course, is also building a cathode materials processing facility at Gigafactory Texas. And this facility will make the cathode precursor materials using a new, more cost-effective process with less steps and zero wastewater. And I'm happy to hear as Drew revealed that Tesla is making good progress with this new cathode materials processing method and have been able to prove it out beyond lab scale into pilot scale and are well on their way to incorporating this revolutionary process into their cathode facility, meaning mass production should not be that far away. Previously at Tesla's Investor Day on March 1st, we learned from Drew that this facility, this cathode processing facility, should be able to process enough material to make 60 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. We also learned that as of March 1st, Tesla was already installing equipment for the first line at that cathode facility and commissioning one is expected to start next quarter, meaning the quarter that we're in right now. So commissioning of this factory could very well begin in the current quarter, Q2 of 2023. These next comments that Drew made really need added context because if you just take this at a surface level with no context, it almost appears like Drew is saying that they're installing um, wet process, wet cathode manufacturing uh, processes at Gigafactory Texas. However, as I did further research, it became obvious that Drew was indeed referring to this separate cathode building here and that he is referring here to the uh, precursor material processing and not the actual process of laminating the powder onto the electrode film. Specifically, Drew said, quote, on cathode production, we are 50% equipment and 75% utilities installed at our new cathode building in Austin with our goal to begin dry and wet commissioning this quarter and next quarter with a target to produce first material before the end of the year. What initially made this a little bit confusing was the fact that Drew specifically said on cathode production, where previously he had uh, made it clear that he was talking about precursor production. However, in context, Drew's previous statements were in regard to cathode precursor production 
And Drew specifically mentioned new cathode building, which refers once again clearly to their cathode precursor processing facility, which is a separate building from the main factory. When it comes to what Drew was referring to when he said dry and wet commissioning, my understanding is that dry commissioning is basically testing the equipment without producing a finished product, and wet commissioning refers to the initial testing of the equipment to produce small amounts of finished product. Another clue that really makes it clear that these comments from Drew have to do with this precursor materials facility comes down to the timeline that he talked about not only at March 1st on Investor Day, which was very clearly um, about this cathode precursor facility. And at that March 1st Investor Day, Drew made it very clear that Tesla planned to start commissioning next quarter, which at that point, next quarter would have referred to Q2 of 2023. And in the April 19th Q1 2023 Investor Conference call, Drew specifically mentioned their goal to start commissioning this quarter once again, referring to the quarter in which this call was held. So Q2 2023, so these timelines match up. So it's very clear that Drew is referring here with this timeline, not to Tesla adding wet cathode manufacturing processes, the lamination process, a wet process there at their Gigafactory in Texas, but rather he's referring to the commissioning of this cathode precursor facility at Gigafactory, Texas. So with that being said, we still really don't have any good clear updates as to how Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process, specifically on the cathode side, is going. We've had some updates once again on the anode side, but I'd like to know if Tesla is actually manufacturing batteries right now, their second generation 4680 batteries, if those have a dry lamination of the cathode materials or if they're using a traditional wet process that has to go through ovens. Hopefully we'll hear more about that in the near future. Drew Baglino's next comments in this conference call had to do with the structural battery pack, and Drew said, structural pack, we saw big improvements with pack manufacturing with the 4680 cell and the structural pack concept, 50% lower capex and 66% smaller factory for the same output in gigawatt hours per year. We do believe structural as a concept is a good one. It's simpler. We continue to structurally load the cells and use the pack as the floor of the vehicle while iterating the design to closer to B-level execution of this A-level architecture in future programs. When it comes to what Drew is referring to here, uh, getting closer to B-level execution of an A-level um, architecture, previously Elon made comments about starting off with a C-level iteration of an A design, meaning that the structural battery pack design is not fully optimized yet, and I believe this refers to possibly manufacturing yield and efficiency, and it also appears like it relates to weight efficiency as well. Notice that Drew referred to future programs, which would have a better iteration of the structural battery pack, meaning improved efficiency, not only I believe for manufacturing, but also weight efficiency. And I believe that would include the Cybertruck structural battery pack. And I personally believe that the Cybertruck efficiency will surprise a lot of people. And some of that may come down to the fact that they have an improved version of the structural battery pack that really starts making a difference when it comes to weight efficiency of the battery pack. In addition to my expectation of the second generation 4680 battery cell to have an improvement of energy density, I also expect that Tesla's future iterations of their structural pack itself will have a better weight efficiency just with the design itself. Because with Tesla's first structural battery pack, the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y only weighs like seven pounds less than the long range all-wheel drive Model Y, despite having a battery pack with approximately 10.4 kilowatt hours less energy. Moving on, Drew then said, and zooming out for 4680 team, Q1 was all about cost and quality. We made significant improvements in both areas. When Drew talks about improving cost and quality, I believe those two are intertwined because as you improve the quality of the battery cells, you have less battery cells that need to be scrapped and thus you don't have the higher cost of producing a battery just to uh, scrap that, making the actual batteries that come out more expensive per battery cell. When it comes to just how much Tesla has improved their yields and their output for their 4680 factories, Drew mentioned, quote, Texas production increased 50% quarter over quarter, through yields increased 12%, and Cato peak rate increased by 20%, and through yields improved by 20%. Thankfully, when it comes to translating these percentages into actual production numbers, Tesla did share on Twitter back in late December of last year that the 4680 cell team was able to produce 868,000 battery cells in a seven-day period, 
So if we use those numbers as where Tesla was in Q4 of 2022, at the time that Tesla revealed this 868,000 battery cells built in a single week, which once again included Gigafactory Texas and their Cater Road facility, based on info from my personal sources and something that Dylan from the YouTube channel Electrified shared in a video on his channel, I believe Tesla was at a run rate of around 100,000 cells per day being produced at their Cato Road facility at that time, and around 24,000 per day at Gigafactory Texas. Meaning it's very possible that at the end of Q1 2023, between Tesla's two 4680 factories, they were producing somewhere around 156,000 battery cells per day, which would equate to an annual run rate of just under 57 million battery cells per year, which also translates out to just a bit under five gigawatt hours. If I am correct, and this is where Tesla is when it comes to production volume, this would mean that they are apparently a little bit behind um, their internal goal, uh, one that Drew Baglino mentioned at their March 1st investor day. Moving on, still in the context of 4680 battery production, Drew Baglino mentioned, quote, altogether the team accomplished a 25% reduction in COGS, and as a reminder, COGS refers to cost of goods sold over the quarter, and we are on track to achieve steady state cost targets over the next 12 months, and going forward for the rest of the year, the priority one is yield and cost for the 4680 program as we steadily ramp production ahead of Cybertruck next year. These mentions of ramping 4680 battery production ahead of the Cybertruck is something that Drew also mentioned in the Q4 2022 conference call when he said, quote, really our 2023 goal as a 4680 team is to deliver a cost-effective ramp of 4680s well ahead of Cybertruck. And while the Cybertruck eventually will need a lot of batteries um, to temper those expectations just a little bit, remember that Elon Musk did make it very clear also in Tesla's Q4 2022 investor conference call that they don't expect to build a lot of Cybertrucks in 2023, but next year, 2024, really should be the year when they build a lot more Cybertrucks. So in all reality, Tesla does still have a little bit of a runway to really fully ramp up their 4680 battery production, and next year is when it becomes a lot more crucial for their 4680 processes to be all ironed out and working very efficiently. So I hope the added context that I provided to Drew's comments was helpful. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say a special thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support really does make a big difference and helps make videos like this possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work and the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.